Welcome to the tutorial video on Twine 2.3. In this video, I'm going to talk about data maps in Harlow 3. To help with complex data organizational needs, Harlow supplies a structure called a data map. A data map is a sequence of key value pairs. We use a key to get to a value, and we construct it using a series of these, a sequence of key value pairs. Harlow has two different macros for creating data maps. Data map and its shorthand DM, which I'll be using throughout this extended example. To create a data map, use either macro, and we supply a series of keys and then their values. These are comma separated, and you'll see when we look at the code, we supply its key, a string value, that is a series of characters, letters, numbers, and special symbols, and then its value, which can be a string or it could be numerical. In this case, I've composed this example following these keys on the left and these values on the right in this table. So we see strength is 11, dexterity 16, constitution 13, intelligence 15, wisdom 16, and finally charisma 18. In each case, the first word, strength, is the key to its value, 11. The same with dexterity to 16, constitution to 13, intelligence to 15, and onwards. That is, we will use the key to get to its value. And that's in fact how we access them as well. Similar to getting values from positions in an array in Harlow, keys work to get values through using the same possessive apostrophe syntax. That is, we can think of it as the value matching the data map's key. And this will make more sense when we look at the code. But we're using the possessive, saying this data map's key, and we're looking for that value. And we see an example of this right here. The character strength is 11. In this case, the key was strength, and its returned value was 11. Let's look at the code. We see right here, I'm, first I'm using the set macro through this entire thing. So I'm setting a variable to something. The something I'm setting it to is a data map. And I'm using the shorthand example of DM. And then I'm supplying a series of comma separated values. These are the keys and then its value. Key, value, key, value, key, value. Separated by commas throughout this. Then we're setting all of that to a variable because we want to be able to use it throughout this extended example. So we see here the first key is strength. Notice it's in quotations and we have its value 11. The next key is dexterity and its value is 16. The next one is constitution and then 13, intelligence and then 15, wisdom and then 16, and finally charisma and then 18. Notice it ends like all macros with opening and closing parentheses around it and then finally the set macro closes with its own open and closing parentheses around it as well. And if we're ever confused in using the Twine editor, let it help you do this. And in fact, if I click inside here, notice it, it survives all of this. This right here, the underline tells me this is all this single macro. And this is the full macro set. So we're creating a data map and a series of keys and values. Then we're saving that data map, its entire data structure, into a variable. And the next you see, I've included the variable right here. This will simply print out the its entire value for us but we're not really doing anything with it right now. Well, in this example, we're just creating it, and that's all we really wanted to do, is create it and then look at it. If we were accessing it, it looks a little bit different. For that purpose, we follow the possessive apostrophe syntax. We see right here, example characters, which is our variables, and notice the apostrophe s, the possessive, strand syntax, and then the key. Notice in this case, the key does not have quotation marks around it. So we're looking for the value matching this data map's key. The key we're using is strength. So we're saying, okay, for this key, find its value. In what structure? Oh, in this structure right here. So an example character's strength. And we're saving it right here to a temporary variable because we're just going to show it in this passage. And in fact, if we were going to attempt to do some calculations with it, a temporary variable would actually be the best way to go about that. 
because we want to go get this value and then we want to do something with it. Maybe we're going to compare values or maybe we'll make some calculation, but we don't necessarily care about the calculation or the steps involved in the next passage. So we'll temporarily save that value, maybe do something with it or compare it, like I said, and then it won't matter past that. But example characters as a story variable will move on throughout the story. So in this video, I've covered data maps in a very basic way. But there are a series of key value pairs that Harlow provides for us, and we define it using either data map macro or the DM macro as its shorthand. And we supply, we supply a series of comma separated values, key value, key value, key value, and we can construct complex data structures. And as you saw here, I supplied a number of different common role-playing attributes along with their values, as if this was an extended example. And then we can access those values using their keys. And then we saw here in this example, because we wanted the value of strength, we supplied that key, no quotation marks around it, and use the possessive apostrophe syntax. Example characters strength. That gave us the number, which was set to a temporary variable, and then we saw that temporary variable when we ran this example. So we can use data maps if we want a series of keys and their values. And it is really helpful for composing things where we want to reference it before. Things like character statistics, where we can easily use a known name to, as a key to get to some known value that we want to use throughout a story. Thanks for watching.